everyone, this is your instructor Joy. Um, today we're going to talk about shoulder rests, different shoulder types of shoulder rests and what they are and how we can find it works for each wellness. So you have to test it yourself. Um, please subscribe and check the dis descriptions below for donations. So um, shoulder rest, I myself have gone through probably 30, 35 different types of shoulder rests in my entire rally playing career. Um, for because I have I had pain, and then there was some kind of fashion, some kind of trend at school, so everybody was using specific type of shoulder rest. So I wanted to have that, so I got that one. It wasn't for me, and then I just went back to my old one. And there was time then when there was no shoulder rest was uh, very sought after. So I tried it, I tried to look one of the cool kits and it, it, I realized I'm so bony here. I, it was slippery too much, it was too painful. So I thought, well, it doesn't work for me. So I went back to using shoulder rest and so on. So I tested thoroughly that and then I think I'm close to the one that's pretty close to perfection that works for me. But even then, you have to remember, um, our body is different every day and our playing gets better every day or worse <laughs> sometimes. So um, you just pay attention about, to your body. So pay attention about your neck muscle and shoulders, see how they are doing. If something is stiff, uh, or most of the time neck, if you have neck pain or neck, if you don't take care of your neck pain, it can go to your back pain so be very alert just pay attention to those um, this is my shoulder rest very old um, I've been using the same shoulder rest for a very for a very long time probably almost 10 years or more I can't remember you're wondering why what why do I have things wrapped here for two reasons uh, this model is Kun very basic model nothing fancy um, this foam comes off, gets unglued, and then um, this the foam loses its cushion. So I want it to have a little cushion. And not only that, if I lower it, when I put on my violin, it scratches here. This part scratches the back of the, my violin. So I didn't like that. So I just kind of wrapped it, the black cloth that was hanging around. Um, in my room just to protect the one. So this is what I use. So that's kind of the newer version is this one. Yeah, this kind of model. So uh, this model is mostly used. It uh, pretty much fits for most of shoulder shape. It has enough cushion. Um, the legs can be adjusted by screwing like that. Um, Sometimes the legs are collapsible, some are, some aren't, but that I find is not a big deal. There's a screw here that you can adjust the width. Pretty fits pretty much um, all shape of violin pretty well. Um, the only thing is it has a limit of how high it can get. So if you have a necessarily nice and long neck, uh, this may not be tall enough. Um, but my neck are not is not that long, so this works fine. If you have a unusually high neck, like very tall neck, um, you might want to find which like uh, this is Wolf W O L F Wolf model, something like that. This uh, gets quite tall, so with the screws like that, Ooh, you can see. So this gets. The height gets quite tall, so this will be something there. So this two types of or more both model like that. Um, I personally prefer this one because it's got a little shape. This is rather flat, that sits better on my shoulder. But if you are not as bony, because um, I don't have much flesh here, so I like to have things a little cushy and a little curvy so it sits better and this one is cush that's cushy enough but it's rather straight 
so I prefer for my body shape this one works better but if you are a little a little chubby here this might work just fine or if you have a bigger shoulder or muscular that might just work fine uh, but this wolf model tend to uh, get really really tall however it has limit of how low it gets so this one to me is right at the limit I wish they could get even even uh, shorter because I like to be able to move my violin when I have my shoulder rest it's a bit too tall for me but uh, if you are a person who with very long neck this kind of model would be good um, there is a uh, Talking of the curve, there's some shoulder rest that has extra sh extra curve like this. Oh, it's like very nice wooden part, the extra shape like this. This one, the idea is very good, but I find this one a little hard, even though it's a beautiful wooden work, because there isn't much cushion, it's just leather. And um, it sits well, but it's a little painful because there isn't much cushion. But again, if you're muscular and are around your shoulder and a little flesh or fat, if they have it there, then maybe this would be just fine. Maybe it's actually better because it kind of has like a, this curve hooks your shoulder. There's another shoulder rest that has a very strong oops, hook, which is this. Uh, I got this one because it was very popular <laughs> in my school when I was at university. So this looks humongous. This has a special hook that you can just like that. Um, the idea is so that your violin doesn't get slipped. But I find this hook rather a little disturbing than helping because I figured out um, it's important for violins to be able to move violin. In old school, they kept the violin and then they move your arm, arm only. But at least me or other modern violins figured out when you move both both hands, so violin and bow together, it's easier to to play nicer. So for that reason, it's important for you to be able to move your violin, tilt it, flatten, whichever you want. But if it's kind of hooked and in one way it's kind of hard so I wasn't crazy about it but try it yourself again it's very personal and it has to do with a lot with your shape of your body and how it's conditioned there are uh, some players who don't use shoulder rest at all um, I have tried that one Zuckerman Pinkus Zuckerman plays this with a very thin leather like a brown leather you know he just put it so that it doesn't slip and then he plays like that. Maybe he can do it because he's a little muscular. And But for me, um, see, uh, he, I find it first very painful and it doesn't hold it very well. I might be able to play high string, but when I go to higher G string, um, I need a little support so that I can go really high. Because when I go high G string, um, my shoulder come off. Do you see that? My shoulder is like that because I'm playing really high G string. So I can't really hold my really violin anymore with my shoulder, but shoulder rest has to do it for me. So when I play high string on G, like this, without shoulder rest, I, I'm screwed. So I need shoulder rest. Uh, but seems like a pink Superman has not, not such problem. Good for him. Um, I believe um, Stern, Isaac Stern, he puts um, kind of foam, you know, one of those foam that you put on a shoulder, just about this and about this big, this big, about this big. He puts under his tuxedo, so underneath, and then he plays on it. Um, I don't, I don't like that idea myself because I'm afraid that foam might go all well. <laughs> but maybe he had enough plays or maybe he had some stitches, I don't know, but it worked for him. Uh, and he's a fabulous player too. Um, I believe Perman plays with, uh, with Kuhn too, if 
I remember correctly. Just very basic one. I've seen also violins playing with a foam, like sometimes it looks like cosmetic pouch, like a foam, red one, something like that. Simply similar idea like Pinka Zuckerman, just basically no shoulder rest, just something to give so that it's not slippery. Whatever you do, the guideline should be after you put shoulder rest, test should be. So the valley should sit on your collarbone, there, a little diagonally. Your neck, you should not squeeze your valley. Your neck should be somewhat straight, just like you're not holding the valley, like that, yeah? And you, should, you can hold your valley slightly, but you should not squeeze overly, like that. And you should be able to let your valley go, yeah? And then see if you can flatten your violin. Let's pretend you're playing here. Meaning, push your chest a little forward and then bring violin to the left. Like this. See if you can do that. And the other way. See if you can tilt the violin so that when you're playing lower string, tilt the violin and then go higher. Like that. See if you can do that. Yeah. And then try all from all string, all four string from low to high like that, no, no matter whether it's inch or not, right. see if your valley is holding wet, well and test a couple of days, see if your neck is doing okay, if your shoulder is doing okay and uh, sometimes when your certain passages are very difficult uh, or when I have to practice many many hours I try just with a simple form, a uh, simple foam um, to because this still has a rigid form doesn't allow to be more flexible i use that one just to give a little um, relaxation to my neck but then i use that one later things like that you can try that one yourself see how it goes some stores offer uh, for you to try certain things out a certain shoulder rest out in their store so you can try that one um, if you want to just invest purchasing some, try it uh, over a longer period of time, which is the best way if you can afford, maybe you can try two different kind of shoulder rests. One, one very curvy, the other one rather um, cushy but taller, things like that, to find out uh, what works best for you. Yeah, I hope this video was helpful. Um, please let me know uh, if you have any questions, subscribe, bye bye.